Hey, this is Brock Amirs, Embedded Systems Design. We're looking at the I2C peripheral on the MSP430. In this video, we're going to look at an example of reading one byte from an I2C slave. So the only difference um, when we configure a, the peripheral, the I2C peripheral for reading, is that we put it in receive mode using the UCTR bit. And this, what this does is it tells the system that once it receives the byte of information, then instead of sending an ACK, it'll send a NACK. Okay, so the master is going to send a NACK to tell the slave, stop sending information. Now, again, we use the, uh, the byte counter to dictate how many bytes of information will come in. So if we say one byte, as soon as one byte comes back from the slave, we will send the NACK to stop it, and then we'll stop the message. If we said we want to send uh, or we want to receive four bytes, then what would happen is that the, we would ack the first three and then knack the fourth one. <laughs> okay, so it always knacks on the last one, but it does it automatically. So this is our challenge. We want to do this. We want to go out to uh, slave address 68, which is the hard-coded address for our Adafruit uh, real-time clock, and we're going to read, and once it acts, it says, hey, I'm 68 and I'm alive. We're going to read from, uh, we're just going to read. And you'll see that what happens is that the way that this real-time clock works is it actually just cycles through all of its uh, registers. So it'll actually you read out all the values from register address 0 up to, to 1C and then flip back. And it happens really fast so you can't see it. But then we'll actually see the NAC. Okay, so let's look at our board setup. We're using the B0 peripheral. Uh, clock and data come over to the uh, real-time clock. We also provide power and ground, 3.4 and ground. And then we also have our little probes set up and we're probing clock with logic analyzer channel zero and data with logic analyzer channel one. If you don't have this setup, uh, refer to prior videos to get that set up. So let's go through the uh, quick setup. So here's the, uh, the block diagram of the I squared C system on the MSP430. Uh, we're gonna first put it in software reset to do our configurations. We are going to configure a 100 kilohertz uh, serial clock or SCA by choosing SM clock, which is 100, one megahertz, and then doing a prescaler of 10. We will put the mode, <clears throat> set up the mode to be I squared C. The peripheral goes I squared C. We're gonna set it up to be master. And then this time we're gonna set it up to be a read, okay? And then the read, is, that's the big change from the last one. Uh, and then the slave address, we're gonna drop in the hard-coded 68 hex for the real-time clock from Adafruit. And then when it comes to how we set up the data transmission, we're gonna again use byte counter. And we're going, to tr we're going to set one in the byte counter, and that means we will read one byte of information, and then we'll be done. Since I put this into automatic stop mode, and I have read mode on, after the one byte comes out, the master will send a knack, which will end the transmission from the slave, and then it will do a stop bit, and that will end the message. Uh, we obviously have to set up the ports <clears throat> to use the I squared C functionality instead of the port port, and then we take it out of software reset. And then here's how we're going to do the uh, actual information. We will start the message manually in, a, in the main loop. So we'll drop, we'll assert the txstt bit, which starts it. Then we'll just use a delay loop, to, delay loop to space them out. But this time, every time information comes back from the slave in the byte field or in the data field, uh, the RXIF G flag will be raised. And so that means that we now have received information from the slave and we can read it out of the receive buffer. So we're going to set up the RXIE zero interrupt this time in order to grab the information out of the receive buffer. And again, the, uh, all the B0 uh, flags and interrupts use the same vector, which is the EUSCI underscore B0 underscore vector. All right, let's fire up some code and we'll take a look here. Uh, so go ahead and fire up CCS. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do new CCS project. And then for a name, we'll get, we'll do, uh, C underscore I to C underscore this is our first receive and then we'll do master and we're going to read one byte. Okay. And we'll make sure it's C. Okay. So here we go. We'll go ahead and nuke our header there and we'll come down here. And the first thing we want to do is set up a B zero I squared C. So we'll put into software reset first and we are going to go into this primary 
uh, configuration register called ucb0 control word zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the clipboard and I'll speed up the coding. And we're gonna set a bit called uc software reset and that puts it into software reset. Now let's do the clock. So we're gonna go into uh, the same register. We're gonna set a bit called uc uh, sscl underscore three and that chooses SM clock. And then what we need to do is we need to go to the UCB zero bit rate, UC zero bit rate word register. And we need to go ahead and just drop a 10 in there. And that sets prescaler to 10, which divides it down. <clears throat> and okay, good. Now let's go in here and set up the, uh, the I squared C main configuration. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, let's put it into, main, into I squared C mode. So we do that by setting a bit using the mask UC mode underscore three. So that's the, let's put into I two C mode. And then we're going to put it into master mode. So we'll set the bits associated with the mask UC MST. And that's put into master mode. And then we're gonna put it into receive mode. So the way we do that is we clear the UCTR bit, <clears throat> and remember when you clear, you gotta use a tilde. That's a bitwise and with the inversion of the mask. So that puts into RX mode or read. <clears throat> and then finally we need to do the slave address. So we go into the I2C slave address and we're gonna drop in a hex 68, which is set. So slave address equals 68 for the real time clock. Okay, and that's the hard coded one. Okay, now let's set up the data transmission. All right, so we're gonna do this. We are gonna do an auto stop mode by going into the control one register. So this is the only bit that is in the uh, control word one register. And what we're gonna do is we need to set a bit that is called, uh, set a bit that's called UCASTP underscore two. And this is the auto stop mode based upon the byte counter, which is UCB zero, and it's TB count, okay? And we're gonna put in there one. So read one byte. So as soon as one byte is read, then it will automatically generate the NAC, which is this guy telling the slave to stop, I've got what I need. And then this will automatically generate the stop bit, okay? All right, so let's do the ports now. So I'm gonna, configure ports <clears throat> and we got to do the port one select register so that we need port one bit three is equal to uh, SCL. So that's the clock. So we go into port one, select one. And we are going to first clear a bit with bit mask three. Okay. And then what we'll do is we are going to set port one select register zero, and we'll bitwise set with that mask. Okay, so that is now set up the clock pin, and then we'll go ahead and copy and paste that. We'll come back up here, and we are gonna now go to port one bit two, and that is gonna be our data. And all we need to do to change that is this to a two. Okay, so I got that. And then the last thing for the ports is we gotta turn, them, turn on the IO system. So we go to power module five, CTL zero, and we clear lock low power mode five. It's a low power mode five bit. And this turns on I, oh, okay. Next, I go ahead and take it out of software reset. So I'm gonna grab this code up here, copy and paste that. Then I take it out of software reset. And what I do there is I need to clear this bit. So I clear it with that mask. What that does is takes out of software reset. Okay, so now that I'm out of software reset, um, I'm ready to basically enable interrupts. So enable IRQs. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the receive zero interrupt. So this is in the UCB zero IE register and I'm gonna set a bit with a mask UCRX uh, IE zero. So this enables and it's the local enable 
or Rx, and it's Rx0. Remember, there's so many uh, interrupts associated with ice word C. We want the low, this Rx0, which means when it receives information, it, the, we can go and pull the information out of the receive buffer. Okay. All right, life is good. And then let's go ahead and enable these because these are uh, maskables. So enable maskables, and that should turn purple if I spelled it right. Okay, cool. All right, now, now we're ready. We're basically in the main loop now. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, just like before, we're going to manually trigger a message and then we'll allow the, the state machine to go ahead and send the start bit, send the slave address, send the read signal, then the slave will acknowledge, and then it will pump out a byte of information. And then once it fires, it will trigger an interrupt and receive interrupt, and then we will go grab that information. Okay. All right. So life is good. And what do we want to do in our main loop? Well, really all we're going to do is sit <laughs> and let's start it and then delay. So let's go into uh, our control register. And what we're gonna do is set a bit that's called UCTXSTT, okay? So this is going to generate start bit. So that did it. So it just generated the start bit. And now we gotta delay for a little bit to give time between messages. And so I just do a delay loop. I is less than 100 and then I uh, we'll do plus plus this time. And then since I'm using a loop variable, I have to send that up. So I'll go into I. Okay, so there's that main loop. Doesn't do much, but starts it, delays, starts it, delays, starts it, delays. So now we're sitting there and I'm feeling pretty good about this. But the question is we need some functionality here to handle when information comes in. So I need to come over here and I need to do a <clears throat> data. No, 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 this is ISRs. Okay, so here we go. Talk to the compiler. Preg ma, meaning I need to set up the interrupt vector table. So please go to EUSCI underscore V0 underscore vector and place the starting address of the routine I'm about to enter. I tell it it's a routine as an interrupt, so return with RETI. And then I'm going to say void EUSCI. Now, this is the name I'm giving it. I'm always giving it the same name, ISUC underscore ISR. Uh, I'm not passing anything in. I'm not taking anything out. And so there we have it. So now what am I doing? All I do in this interrupt service routine is I need to read from the receive buffer, but I actually do need to read from it because when I read from it, it clears the read flag. So I need to set up a variable, uh, let's call it data in, and all I'm gonna do is say UCB0RXBuff. So I just read from the receive buffer. Now we could set this up as a local variable. Uh, let's just make it a, a global variable just because just because if I wanted to see it in the, the debugger, I wanna put it at address 2000 in memory and let's make it car so it's, it's only eight bits, okay? So there it is. All right, that is really it. And what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and fix our typos and then what we'll do is we'll uh, look at this with the logic analyzer. So typo, 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 where are you? Line 46, what's the problem? Oh, gotta get them parentheses in there, man. Come on, come on, all right. I ain't too bad. I ain't too bad. Hey, nothing but nothing hurt. Nothing hurt. Take your time. Okay, let's go ahead and run it. All right, so now it's running. So let's go over to uh, Logic Analyzer. I want to do, here's my I squared C bus. Just in case you didn't know how to do that, you're going to add signals. I squared C, uh, Logic Channel 0 is clock. Logic Channel 1 is data. 7-bit address, hexadecimal format. Uh, protocol trigger, I squared C, trigger when you see a start. And let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Holy moly, something's going on. So let's tr slide this over. Oh, baby, look at this. Let me zoom out so I see these message, 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 message. It's only saying error because you need the whole packet on the screen to be able to decode it. So now let's go in and see what I have here. So look at this. Uh, 10 to 30, it goes 10 to 50. Let's see what 25 looks like. Oh, look at this. Start bit, re, 68 slave, read. Act because the slave exists, and now you see all this information coming in here. What is it doing? This real-time clock is actually cycling through all of its registers. So I am able to read out every value of every register. So it goes register address zero, register address one, register address two, goes up to, to 19 and then flips back over and is continually doing that. The master sends a knack telling it I'm done reading that one byte and then the stop is generated. If I hit stop on this logic handlers and I hit single, 
I can actually step through and see the values. So I see three, seven, eight. Oh, baby, look at this. Look at how cool this is. This is pretty, pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. So we did it. Congratulations. You have now done your first I squared C read from an I squared C slave. Good job. And as always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.